Welcome back, everybody. I am the one, the only, the original Gramster, aka OG. And today I've built a huge rocket. This rocket features a huge ball of hydrogen on the top. It's fuel for a nuclear rocket. Yes, I am being a hypocrite. I apologize. I said I hate nuclear rockets and I won't use them. But then I figured out a way to use them. Yes, what you saw was my first launch failing. What you didn't see was a whole lot of other launches that failed because this rocket is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to launch. It's very heavy. The section that is the payload is that big ball on top. That is the payload, the fuel. I'll explain later. You'll see. I'm being tricky on this video. You'll see what's happening. That top section weighs, consults notes, um, 90 tons. It weighs 90 tons. And the top two sections, which I can put into orbit, weigh 261 tons. So, very heavy. Oh look, there's something else there in space. What is that? What is that? You don't get to see that yet. It is merely a teaser. I will show you later on what that's all about. Suffice to say that there is something else in orbit up here, and I need to catch it. However, I'm in a really big rocket today. Okay, let me clarify. I'm not in it. Bill's in it. And I don't know how Bill got in there because I did not want to launch Bill. Somehow he got in there accidentally. Um, and he's not in it. He's on it. He's riding on the outside of it. Okay, so first stage gone. Second stage left. Right, so the, what you're looking at there is 261 tons of rocket launching its nose cone into the distance. I love that little separating nose cone. I'm particularly proud of that, even though it is the least engineering-y part of this engineering challenge. And believe me, this was an engineering challenge. So wave hello. Bill, wave hello. Bill, wave. Wave hello, Bill. Bill, the nice people have come to YouTube to watch you. Wave to them. Bill, they're not going to subscribe and like and... Guys, I apologize on behalf of Bill. This is why I didn't want to use him. Okay, where was I? Yes, very big rocket. Very tricky to rendezvous in orbit with such a big rocket. Because it is so extremely heavy and unmaneuverable. The larger the object is, the more difficult it is to do a rendezvous and specifically a docking so I spent quite a long time working on the docking and it was extremely difficult but you'll get to see that later too now what exactly am I docking with well I can't tell you that yet I'm gonna to have to show you sorry you're going to have to be patient a little longer. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Just when I got everything set up perfectly, I accidentally hit the shift key, and that is the, the thrust key, and threw everything out and, and had to restart again. But eventually I got it back to where it should be. And it's a very slow process because you want to approach the target as carefully and gently as possible. You want your orbits to be synced up almost perfectly so that the distance apart when you when you reach the target is the smallest it can possibly be and also so that your speed differential is tiny because those two things make a big difference. Those are what you have to cancel out when you're doing the actual rendezvous which is what I'm about to start here. Now you can't quite see the object we've come to rendezvous with yet, but it's there, just behind the vessel. I'm heading backwards now. Well, Bill's heading backwards now. 
let's see what OG's built for this huge rocket, which I call the Orbi tank, to rendezvous with. What? What is it? What is it? It looks like a space station of sorts. OG, what have you built? What are you doing with nuclear... Ro oh my word, OG. It's a space station with two more Orbitank rockets already docked to it. That's right, folks. This is my third Orbitank rocket, currently spinning, which I have launched to this space station. Uh, the spinning thing, just by the way, is one of the many KSP glitches. If you change between craft in in this scenario and you leave the RCS thrusters on, your craft will start spinning, which is just perfect and exactly what you want to happen when you are trying to dock two platforms together. That makes it very tricky, so pro tip, uh, don't dock both platforms at once like you would do in KSP1, just leave the one absolutely static and then maneuver around with the other one, which makes things harder. If you follow Matt Lown's Lown Lazy Method, you can't do that at the moment. So it's it's manual docking. Um, SAS works for you sometimes, works against you at other times. You just got to try and wing it. And you'll see just how tricky that is. Actually, you won't, because this was a very easy docking. And this was my third Orbi tank rocket I sent. So I made... Let me rephrase, sent successfully. There were many that didn't make it. Um, so I made adjustments each time I made a new rocket. And this one, this one is the first one with the reaction wheel inside it. And it's also got the most RCS thrusters. You can see that this was not a successful docking attempt. Now that station, that station was something else when it came to getting that into orbit. Initially, I tried to launch it <laughs> full of fuel. It weighed over 300 tons. Um, predictably, that did not go well. And I reduced the fuel, launched again, reduced the fuel, launched again. And eventually, I got it down to a launch weight of 135.76 tons. And that's what I got into orbit. So the idea now is that I fill it up from these Orbi tank rockets. And that is why I'm trying to dock this one specifically with the second stage still attached because that's got Methalox in it and the station has Methalox tanks. So the idea being then that these Orbi tanks can fill up the station with the ultimate idea that the station can then serve as a docking port for these Orbi tank rockets and also fill them up if necessary. Because those first two, I used a little bit of the, the hydrogen, the nuclear fuel, to get them docked there. Even though, compared to the amount in that big ball, it's minuscule. Let's see if this docking attempt goes any better. This is only my second one. I almost gave up with this entire project. I almost scrapped this thing. I had the second rocket in orbit for a day a day of real time from one evening i tried to dock it i was up till 3 a.m beyond 3 a.m without docking it successfully ha <laughs> ha dock this one yes but that second one i didn't dock it 3 a.m in the morning i gave up i came back the next day tried in the morning tried in the afternoon eventually i got it docked and this is why it is so important to have a really, really good approach. Okay, so that's what we have there now. A space station with three Orbi tank rockets. The idea of these rockets is that they can be used in a modular fashion with other rockets. What I want to do is launch rockets into orbit. This is a 200 kilometer orbital altitude. Then I want them to come and rendezvous at the station and there are four different docking ports of various sizes and then uh, 
eight of these medium docking ports. So the four docking ports are the other sizes. So I can basically accommodate any craft at this station. The solar panels, you can see them being deployed there. They can get retracted when a docking is in progress so that I don't knock them off. Ask me how I found that one out <laughs> or, or how I found out that it's a good idea to retract them. Yeah, I might have sent one off spinning into space. Thankfully, I had a, a save game. Okay, but then the ultimate idea is that I come up here, I pick up one of these rockets and I pick up the little maneuvering module on the end if I want to as well. Each rocket is attached to the space station by a separate maneuvering module which can also be detached. Everything done with docking ports. And the maneuvering module has thrusters in it. Um, some of them are just the Methalox RCS thrusters and some of them are the monopropellant RCS thrusters. It depends on which version of the orbit tank it was that I sent. The ultimate idea then is that one of these full orbit tanks is waiting in orbit. I attach it onto whatever little rocket I send up and I can send a very small rocket up and then just attach one of these on the back and it'll fly off into Elu and back probably a few times. Don't quote me on that. I haven't tested it. <laughs> but it's going to give me a long reach into space. The tricky part will be designing a rocket that works with it. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. Um, I've had ideas for like outriggers with docking ports that maybe I can attach two of these to one vessel because obviously I can't put a um, docking port under a rocket engine but the most obvious way to do it is probably to put a docking port at the front of a rocket and then I attach an orbi tank to the front and then I fly the rocket essentially backwards so that's probably what's going to happen and whether I actually use this or not I don't know but I thought it would just be pretty cool to build and so I built it there it is and I can transfer all the fuel around and dump some of the ones that become empty and whatever. I'd love to fill this thing with orbi tanks, but it is a mission. Anyway, no ultimate goal for this other than to build the space station and to show you how the orbi tank system works. I think we'll be seeing it again in the future. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you want to see more of it. Tell me if it's a dumb idea and I should scrap it. Today's shout out goes to Aquilay Company. If you haven't checked out that channel, it's hosted by a guy called Nick. Go take a look at Aquilay Company. He's into gaming, cars, and tech. Obviously, he builds some very good KSP2 stuff. I will drop a link to his channel in the video description. Go check it out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Your support is always appreciated. OG out.